first of all, what's this day like for you guys? Because you're worried about all this, but you're obviously wanting to check in on what is happening with Coach Reft and the Olympic team. Yeah, I mean, we're excited. It's going to be a lot of checking Twitter, maybe a little looking at our phones here and there, but we're just really proud of Alfie, and we're hoping that we're not going to see him for a while because that means they're doing good stuff. Right, this is a balance for you, right? Because everybody on the team, so especially the rest of the staff, you want the head coach back because the season's only three and a half weeks away, but you don't want him back too quickly. Exactly. I mean, last year we got some good prep when Alfie was away for the quarterfinal match. Um, year two, taking some time away from your head coach. I mean, that's never ideal, but I think the girls are just so proud of him. It's given us something to cheer for. All of UCLA's rallied around Alfie in support because they know what a big deal it is and how great the things that he's doing for Team USA. So getting ready to start year one as a member of the Big Ten. So your first ever Big Ten Volleyball Media Days. No, you guys just got in yesterday, so it's yeah. kind of been a quick start. And you're one of our earliest guests this morning. What's the experience been like so far for you and your players? So far, everything's been fantastic. The dinner and the reception yesterday was great. I think we're just excited to be here and we're excited to showcase uh, Anna and Audrey who are like just two fantastic leaders for our team and we're looking forward to what the day has in store. So Elena and Holly will chat with those two players coming up in just a little bit but let's discuss what they mean to your program. Anna Dodson a three-time all Pac-12 performer 2023 honorable mention All-American. Uh, what does she mean to your program and what will you need from her in 2024 to make this year successful? Yeah, I mean, Anna is definitely a leader on our team. I think you can watch her play and understand kind of like the emotional um, heartbeat of our team for sure. She wears her uh, heart on her sleeve. She's so passionate. I mean, she's obviously a big presence at the net for us and she's put in a lot of really good work, got some time training with Team USA, and we're looking forward to kind of like what she's going to do for her last time as a Bruin. As we get to watch some of her highlights right now, what really stands out about her skill set? I think um, everyone kind of like talks about like what Anna is able to do offensively and as a blocker, but people really lose um, how she processes the game, what she thinks, how she's able to kind of pick setters apart, pick offense apart. It's so fun coaching her because like on the sideline, we're just having conversations about what I'm seeing, what she's seeing, um, Alfie's chiming in, and it's just this really neat collaborative environment that Anna's put a ton of time in watching video to create. In a sense, like having another assistant coach, but one that's actually playing on the floor. Exactly. Audrey Pack also with you. Now, 15 of her 19 starts came in your last 15 matches of the year. So, obviously, her role expanded later in the year. How much more do you envision that role expanding this year? I think that when Audrey comes in, right, it's going to be a battle to start for the setter position. But Audrey's gotten a lot of good experience for us. She's been a part of some really big wins in our program last year. And I think that she also put in a ton of work, extra reps, um, trying to like dial in the tempo. I know that she's communicated a lot with the new incomers that we have, making sure that when we start in a couple of days that we're able to hit the ground running with some connection. Hitters get so much more of the attention because they make the big swings, they get the points and the kills to get the fans out of the seats. But as I was just talking with Purdue head coach Dave Shondell, he pointed out the importance of the setter for those hitters and the chemistry and understanding and how much harder it is for hitters if you're rotating through different setters. So can you talk to me a little bit about that strategy and from a coaching perspective, what you're looking for when you're looking for that setter hitter relationship? So I think a, part, a big part of that is kind of like how you communicate off the court as well. It's really hard to like battle and play with someone if you don't really know them as a person. So both the setters on our team, that's something that Alfie stresses. He works a lot with them of just how to build, how to bring the most out of your players. Everyone's going to need something a little bit different. And so that's where kind of like the art of setting comes into play, so to speak. What's been the biggest focus for you, for Alfie, for the rest of the staff? I mean, this is a huge transition year. I understand winning volleyball is winning volleyball, whether you're playing in the Pac-12 or the Big Ten, but there is more travel. There's a talk about the compare and contrast between styles. How are you guys focusing on making this transition as easy as possible? I mean, obviously the Big Ten is the best conference in volleyball. And so in order to prep for that, we scheduled a tough non-conference. We're gonna be on the road. Um, we're gonna get a firsthand look at what it's like to travel across the country, play in different time zones, um, what that turnaround is gonna be. So we feel that going into our first match of conference, we're gonna be battle tested. We're gonna have obviously adapting and adjusting to some of the travel piece, but I think we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Obviously, Audrey and Anna are here because they're two players that you rely on, but you're going to have to be so deep in this league. Give us some other names that Big Ten volleyball fans who have watched this league in the past maybe should get used to hearing when they're watching their favorite teams play against UCLA. 
I think we'll, we're having a Brooklyn Briscoe. She's another middle coming off of a redshirt season. Um, she's going to be fantastic. She's probably going to come in. You'll see her here or there. We've gotten a couple transfers in as well. Sophia Victoria from the University of Florida. Uh, Leilani Dodson, who I assume you guys are pretty familiar with. Kate Riley's coming off a fantastic career at Stanford playing beach. And so I think a strength of our team this year is the amount of depth, the amount of different uh, faces. You'll see everyone brings a little bit of a different style to the game, and I think it's just going to make us even more competitive in those big matches. I'm glad you bring up the transfer portal because it's really changed what college volleyball, really all sports in college, have become. But we see so many more interconference transfers, I think, in volleyball than we do in other sports. What's your strategy and your philosophy along with Alfie and the rest of the staff in terms of recruiting and balancing the traditional recruiting style with the transfers that maybe come in and are absolutely college ready? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for our program is Alfie really prioritizes who the people that are coming in are. And so obviously there's great players across the country, but if they're not necessarily the personality fit or the cultural fit for our team, then unfortunately sometimes, you know, we have to look in another direction. So I think the biggest part for us is just the people that we're bringing in. Like, are they on board? Are they all in? And are they just gonna help continue to propel UCLA forward and the vision of what Alfie wants to do for this program? Obviously another thing that changes and more significantly for you and the other three West Coast schools, travel. Big Ten existing schools before last Friday have to make one long road trip west. You guys have to do it a lot more often. How do you kind of offset that, make it a little bit easier for the players who are at the same time they're trying to win matches, balancing academics at a really tough school? Yeah, I think UCLA has done a fantastic job of just prepping all sports with kind of like what that's going to look like academically, recovery-wise. Um, they've put a ton of resources into making sure that our student athletes are going to be taken care of, having the best experience, and we're going to be able to compete with just everybody else in the country. Now, I looked multiple times at your schedule to make sure I wasn't missing something with a home match that was sprinkled in there that I didn't see, and I just see road, road, <laughs> neutral, road. Uh, by design, did it happen for a specific reason? And what do you hope to be able to get out of a team after being that road tested in the non-con? I think the biggest part is just the prep for quick turnarounds, for long flights. Um, we're going to learn a lot about like how our team recovers, um, what our team's going to need academically. I think we want to be really good for the athletes, mainly in like the recovery space of just it's tough. You're flying across the country. You've got to get off a flight. Um, quick turnaround to go and play. So I think it's just going to give us a lot of like data and insight for what our girls need and how we're able to best support them. All right, lastly, Amir, we started by talking about Alfie and Team USA about to start that quarterfinal match. Obviously, you're hoping that they're playing in not just the quarters, but the semis and the championship as well. It also means that Alfie's going to be in Paris for a while. It shortens the time that he will be back with you guys before the season starts because we're only three and a half weeks away. What will that mean for you and the rest of the staff with a snug window between the time he comes back and the time of the first match and what you need to get out of your team before then? I think luckily we get those five extra days this year. So while Alfie does miss, you know, a couple of those five, he's going to be back for the bulk of like that two week window that we get. He was so great with kind of like the collaboration and our prep going into season, how we were going to structure practices, lifts, like the flow, the messaging. So, I mean, we're lucky to have such a great leader because we've been prepped for, for this situation for a couple months now. Amir Lugo Rodriguez, we appreciate you coming in. And by the way, for anybody that noticed, no, Amir and I did not text <laughs> each other before the show. We are twinning a little bit. The bad news for me is that he wears it a whole lot better. Truly appreciate your time, Coach. Uh, we'll take a look now at some of those games that we mentioned, the matches on the schedule. Yes, early on, there's a lot of ats at Georgia Tech at Tennessee. Uh, welcome to the Big Ten at Nebraska in early September. They have Penn State, USC, Oregon, Washington, all part of that early schedule. Wisconsin a little bit later, more toward the end of the year. For more for our, some select Bruin players, we send it over once again to Elena and Holly. Thank you, Rick. Holly and I are back, this time joined by Audrey Pock and Anna Dodson of UCLA Volleyball. Welcome to Big Ten Media Days and welcome to the Big Ten Conference. We are so excited to have you guys here. I'd love to hear from both of you just what are your thoughts about joining this conference for volleyball? We're both so excited. Just even being here for Media Day has been so awesome to see all the great resources and just how much is being put into this conference, so we're really excited. Yeah, it's truly a great opportunity just to be a part of such a competitive conference. 
um, and we're just honored to be here today. You guys, both grad students, uh, first year with Alfie Ref last year. How did your program change under him? Yeah, Alfie really instilled a player-led um, culture that obviously he inspires and impacts, um, but it's been nothing but amazing with him. Um, he, you know, has given so much to this program already and is just setting the stage for the future. Um, and I think that's really being shown with the new Bruins that we currently have. Obviously, Alfie, we were just chatting about it, is over in Paris with Team USA right now. How special is it to have your coach go and coach those girls and then come back and kind of bring that experience into your gym? It's so cool knowing that he's out there coaching the best of the best and then he gets to come back and take what he's learned with them and teach it to us. And it's such an honor because he is just so wise and getting such great experience with them. Yeah, I second that. I think. You know, Alfie brings so much knowledge already to the game and just having his resources with USA and then being able to go from their training to our training is just so special and being able to learn from him and learn from what he's working on with their players and bringing that to our players, it's honestly just an inspiration every day and I'm truly lucky. Audrey, you had to battle hard to win that setting position last year. You finished strong. What have you worked on the most since last season? Since last season, I've mostly been focused on just overall consistency with my sets and then connection with all of our hitters. And we also have some new faces in the gym. So just building those relationships and working on those connections. Anna, for you, coming into Big Ten Conference, what are your expectations and how does the West Coast style differ from the Big Ten current style? Yeah, I do not have any expectations, but us to go out and give our absolute best and um, you know the wins will come with that. Um, I think the West Coast style does differ with um, the West, the Midwest and East Coast, but truly, you know, I think playing against different styles, it allows us to bring more competitive energy and also learn from each other while we're competing. Um, and I think, you know, that's also going to advance Big Ten uh, volleyball, and it's going to be great to be a part of. We love having you in this conference, and I'm sure all of the fans, Big Ten volleyball fans, are super passionate. So I want to let them get to know you guys a little bit more. Tell us a little bit about the culture of UCLA volleyball and just what kind of makes UCLA volleyball into UCLA volleyball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Anna was saying, having Alfie join us really helped us build our culture from the ground up and lay such a good foundation. And like Anna said, too, we're really big on just having a player-led culture where everyone, even if you're a freshman, everyone is giving their input because everyone just brings something so unique to the table. So we just love having everybody contribute. And I feel like that's what makes UCLA UCLA because we're just all in and everyone's all in. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the goals for our, this year and for our season is just bringing ferocity and unity. And we've really solidified with this these new seven players that have already came to us this summer. Um, just that unity piece and it's been great during the season and in the summer we do um, 10 meetings which are team enhancement meetings and we focus on our culture getting to know each other on a deeper level and that really just truly shows on the court how tight we are when we take that time and put in the work off the court. There's some incredible venues in the Big Ten. Are you looking forward to any in particular to compete in? Yeah, personally, I'm looking forward to Maryland and Rutgers. I actually have family over there, um, so I'm excited to actually have them in the crowd um, and see another place. I'm excited for our conference opener at Nebraska. I feel like after our preseason, it'll just be such a good chance to put what we've learned to the test. And obviously, Nebraska has such a cool culture with their fans and how bought in they are to it. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear from both of you heading into your last seasons at UCLA. What do you kind of want your legacy to be once you leave this program? Yeah, that's something that we actually talk about a lot in, for each player. And for me, um, you know, I'm going into my sixth year. So it's all about just making this program better. Um, and I think, you know, it's already that's already happened. And it's just continually, continually finding new ways to upgrade. Um, a big thing in our gym um, is adapt and adjust. So there's always going to be adversity and challenges we have to overcome. But truly, it's just, you know, what can I do for my teammates? What can I do for UCLA? What can I do for those that um, have played before us and obviously honor them and play for their legacy? Yeah, my answer is really similar to Anna's. Basically, what she said, what can we do for UCLA? And also the players that are going to come to UCLA in the future, just leaving everything we have and 
how we can love our teammates right now and just help build the culture so that UCLA's legacy can continue to excel. Anna, you thought about getting on the portal being done a year ago. Mm -hmm. You're back now with this opportunity to compete in the best conference in the country. What are you most excited about? Oh, I'm just excited to play in such a competitive conference. I know like this year is going to be so amazing just with the amount of people that we have and um, what's already been showing just in our summer practices. Um, I think we're really coming for blood and um, it's just it's just so exciting. I guess Goosebone's thinking about it. <laughs> just to finish it off here, I would love to hear about what your favorite part of just being a student athlete at UCLA is. Obviously, we know the UCLA volleyball program has a rich history, national championships. You got one of those. <laughs> but would love to hear just in general the experience of being a student athlete at UCLA and rigorous academics, great volleyball. Give us a little preview into your lives. Mm -hmm. What I love about UCLA is just its culture of excellence in all aspects, especially academics and also athletics, not just our team, but being able to be around such other excellent programs like men's volleyball, beach volleyball. It's just nice to be around that. Yeah, I think UCLA is top tier in every sport. And like Audrey said, just being surrounded by that on the daily with friends and teammates and other sports is just such an opportunity. Um, and we really relish with that kind of um, mindset of success around UCLA. And it's top tier academics and top tier athletics, so I couldn't ask for more. What's been your favorite station so far today at Media Day? Besides I mean, ours. We've we only been at the favorite. TikTok station. Oh, okay. But yeah. We're That's having a grand blast. <laughs> so we're number one. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Holly, I lied. One more question. Okay. When they were just talking about their experience as student athletes at UCLA, I would love to hear yours. Does that echo yes. that? What was your experience Absolutely. like? Absolutely. I mean, you're surrounded by people who want to be the best and a great academic institution. And I've been in the gym with Alfie coaching them, and it's so inspiring. I wish I still had eligibility. He's got the whiteboard. <laughs> He's very um, focused on details, and it makes me want to come back and play, and I can't anymore. But you guys get to, and you're lucky, so enjoy it. Yes, we love having you, Holly. Come back anytime. Yes. <laughs> I'll make my way into your gym, too. Yes, yeah, I promise. Sure. Everyone's <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, Audrey, Anna, thank you so much. This has been so fun. Welcome to the conference. Enjoy the rest of your day here at Big Ten Media Days. Thank, thank you, you so guys. Much.